Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to our November 2020 aquarium update. Over here, there's the aquarium. Let's go see what's going on. Someone's going for a crazy ride. After the snail ants, it's time to start our pothos project. You see here we have some pothos plants. These are kind of just uh, cheap, inexpensive plants uh, that you can find at your local garden center. What I think I'm going to do is pull these out of the pot and then get rid of all of the dirt, rinse that off uh, so that just the bare roots are exposed and then kind of dangle them in the aquarium. All right, so this is after I've cleaned the roots. Well, we can start with our 29 gallon. And so the thought is those will grow and help reduce the nitrates. And now let's go check out the 150. Okay, so I got my pothos plants here. All right, so here we are, we got our plants here. We're gonna dangle them in. Okay, so here they are kind of dangling. You can see the roots below there. A little experiment. The pathos experiment. So I'm just gonna eat this leaf. Since we're eating leaves and watching snails race, let's make a batch of Snello. I promise not to talk like Julia Child. <laughs> well, that didn't go very well. Okay, so we got a bunch of stuff out to make some Snello. So I used this uh, Snello premix from uh, Crayfish Empire. But this is what it kind of looks like. It's a, a mix of krill and all sorts of uh, stuff that I just don't have on hand because I, I just have a couple of tanks. And basically what you do is you throw this, any extra fish food that you have, vegetables like spinach and zucchini, and throw some calcium together in a bowl. And uh, meanwhile, we're going to make a gelatin over here. I'm boiling about two and a half cups of water here, and then we're going to make a gelatin out of that. Don't worry, we'll have Julia Child there to guide us along the way. You just have to have the courage of your convictions, particularly if it's sort of a loose mass like this. And so you dump your Snello Mix packet in here, and that happens. If you're on a diet, don't even think of a pate. All right, five heavy tablespoons of calcium carbonate. Yeah, we'll add some blood worms in there. I I can shake that back in place a little bit. All right, then I'm gonna take five of these gelatin packets and uh, add them into the water with a whisk. It's got to kind of dissolve these extra chunks that form. Just take some time and maybe a longer whisk would do. Whew. So now I'm going to add the two together. So in this case, we'll put on a little bit of cheese. So I'll just put a little more cream on. This business is awfully good. So that's how the magic happens. We don't care about calories. So I shall set that aside. Okay, so we'll see how this comes out after we put it in the freezer for a while. So now you see our two bags of Snello. You can see uh, we have two different sizes. This is the big, large size, and then the uh, snack size. Uh, these little ones, you can just kind of drop them kind of all over the tank. And then later on, the snails. And Costumus, they'll be out. They'll get those treats. Mm -hmm. So the one con to Snello is that it will foul up your tank. Full disclaimer. You can see a bristlenose for Costumus. And there's these guys. Let's 
So we should probably talk about the pre-filter sponge. There it is. See it back there? Basically, it sits on my filter intake and it adds extra surface area for beneficial bacteria to build. So I got two of them in here, one there and one back there. You can barely see it because of all the plants and stuff, but we're going to service them. It's important to clean them every once in a while to keep them from clogging. I use the coarse sponge from Aquarium Co-op. So we're going to get some tank water and put it in the bucket. Why do I suddenly have to pee? Okay, so we'll do this here. Let's take this off the intake. Uh, it's going to send some debris everywhere. I'm going to put it in that guy right there. And then we squeeze it out. This is all aquarium water, not tap water. Squeezing it out, but still, you know, leaving beneficial bacteria in there. Just to improve the flow. Okay, it squeezes. Put it back in here. Try and snake it in through the jungle veil here. There she is, she's back on there. So I just want to illustrate a point here to watch your fish and get to know them. So I went to go feed bloodworms to these discus. There's the bloodworms sitting there right there. I'm like, what is up? And so the first thing I check is my temperature. That temperature should be much higher up there at 85. Anyway, my heater was unplugged. So the discus need it warm and these clown loaches too, they like it warm. We'll warm it up in there so they can enjoy their breakfast. Sorry guys. About an hour or so later, you know they're feeling better because they're chasing each other and a little more active. Phew, that was a close one. A few days later, I realized that the jungle bell in my aquarium had kind of taken over. Well, it's just about Halloween, and as you can see, we're creeping and crawling with jungle bell. We're, we're gonna take care of it Let's, right now. What are you guys hiding from, huh? Okay, so the first part we'll be working on is on the right side of the tank here. I'm gonna pull, as I said, a bunch of this jungle valve up here that's kind of getting up in the front here. So for this I'm going to have my uh, tweezers and plant scissors ready. Okay, so we're going to take the scissors and we're going to snip right here, this guy right here. There should be another one right here. Okay, and I should be able to pull the sucker out. That's one, one jungle valve plant. Ah, ah, ah. That's two, two jungle valve plants. Ah, ah, ah. So I put all of my jungle valve on this plastic bag here. So I'm gonna take it to my local fish store, Aqualand. Yeah, cause waste not, want not, shoot. Halloween 2020. It certainly has been the spookiest Halloween I've ever lived through. Another thing I like to do is just shine some natural sunlight into the tank on the weekends and just see how the fish interact. They love to play in it and it's really cool just with natural lighting. Yeah, they are playing in the natural sunlight. Those clown loaches are hilarious to watch. It's like you came for them. <laughs> now we must go over here. Now we're going back. We're going back. Very popular place underneath the log. Well, you never come out. Look how pretty you are. You never come out. Maybe that's why. I was just dropping in some new zucchini and I dropped in this piece and look where it landed. I swear to God, it just, that's like a once in a lifetime shot. I did not plant that there. That's awesome. <laughs> Breaking news, this is the first time I've seen this bristlenose, baby bristlenose placostomus out in the open. It's pretty cool. Later that evening, my daughter wanted to drop some zucchini into the fish tank. What you got there? Zucchini. Good job. Hey, you want to put that in your fish tank? But it's so hot. That's what daddies are for. <clears throat> there you go. Stand up. Oh, good job. You like it? There. 
There is our zucchini. We moved it to the center there. All right. Do you think those? Do you think they're going to munch on that? All right. Well, anyway, here's the tank. The silver flying foxes continue to do good. Their beautiful yellow fins, and they're going ahead and doing a really good, good job at uh, keeping the algae off of all of the decorations, I think. Rummy nose tetras continue to do good. Always amusing to watch them and their schooling behavior. Serpe tetras hanging in there, doing good. Got a, this guy's huge. Clown loaches are exciting as always and they're getting a little bit bigger now like, it's kind of fun to watch them school and do their thing Plants are getting a little taller up at the top, so these are all good things. Attack of the Rummy Nose Tetra. There's a lot of them swarming. Well, hey, thanks for watching. Next time we'll give you an update of the Pothos plants up here. Yeah, well enjoy this tank. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video book all about first courses and desserts. We'll catch you next time.